All right. Hello, seven impossible things before breakfast. Um, the question is, how do I work? And I'm going to give you a um, tour of my working process, I guess is the right word to use. So I have to start out <clears throat> with every project. I get the manuscript and I begin by grabbing one of these cheap pads. I fell in love with this pad uh, when I worked on Bird and I bought like 20 of them and they're pretty cheap. Uh, and I was worried, you know, sometimes things go out of, uh, they, they're discontinued and I was like, I need these pads in my life. So I got about 20 of them. So I'm going to show you um, uh, the sketchbook for Whitewater. My sketchbook is the place where I begin. Like the hardest part of, of most projects is getting started uh, because you're, you know, you're worried about making something beautiful or making something great and uh, the sketchbook is the place to just start and not care about anything other than telling the story in an interesting way and in a coherent way. Um, so you can see like they're just tiny little thumbnails. They usually start out very small. This is probably one of the first uh, thumbnail sketches that I did for Whitewater uh, and as I begin to, to become more confident with the direction that I'm trying to go in they get bigger and a bit more detailed especially you know again really tiny um, I scan these and drop them into some layout software like InDesign or Quark and make a PDF and send to my editor my art director and as we have more conversation and things you know need to be changed or added you know maybe there's a different suggestion on a page that's when the sketches tend to get larger <laughs> and a bit more detailed. Uh, so for example, this is a scene in Whitewater. Uh, these all four sketch, all, all four of these sketches are uh, from the same page, but in them I was trying out different compositions, showing a different background, um, more city here, the dog in the bag as opposed to, you know, not showing the dog at all, but the dog was one of the main characters in my opinion in the book, uh, so we dropped the dog in and had him running, you know, next to Michael, our main character. Um, from these sketches, I usually, if I'm having a hard time in the beginning, I make, oops, that's the wrong one. I make a little booklet, a little dummy, of all of my thumbnails. And this is a way for me to see how the pages turn. It's not enough for me to have them all sort of laid out together. I need to physically turn the pages and see how the story is progressing. And you can see again, all these are really loose. For those of you all who have the book, uh, you may recognize some of the scenes in here, or you may recognize some uh, deviation of one of the scenes that I'm showing you here. From this, once we decide uh, the direction uh, for the book, once all the sketches are approved, I usually blow these thumbnails up to, to the size that I'm going to work in. Uh, fortunately, Candlewick was wonderful because they blew them up for me and <laughs> sent me all of the final thumbnails like so. So from here, I lay down uh, a piece of tracing paper and I refine the drawings. This is when I use all of my reference and um, you know if, I sh if I'm working with models, which I usually do, I will have shot my models already. There's a fan that's blowing this, I'm sorry, um, and continue to draw. So this is the final drawing for one of the pages in white water. Uh, and then I go ahead and I'll, I'll draw this down onto uh, watercolor paper usually printmaking paper because it's softer and unsized and I can um, have a bit more freedom to, to work creatively I guess with unsized paper than I do with bright white watercolor paper. So from there the painting is done and along the way I have this in my studio on the wall usually just sheets of all of the drawings that need to get done for the book and as I finish them I mark them off with a red marker and the more red marks that are on my wall the better I feel as the book goes along so that is the working process um, I'm also going to show you a couple of other sketchbooks sketchbooks are very very important to artists although well, the success of an artist maybe the life of an artist I don't know um, you know number one it keeps your hands working and limber and loose 
and it just keeps your brain going. These are location drawings that I did in, um, where was I? In New Orleans, when I worked on a place where hurricanes happen. Uh, I was trying to get to know the city, so I walked around and just drew things that I saw. I talked to different people. I would draw some of the people that I met along the way. This is a trolley car, and I sat in a park at the end of the line and, and drew this and talked to people. Uh, I just think it's so important. Like you, you're observing the world, and when you're then making books, you have this information already kind of stored in your memory uh, from drawing it, so you don't have to struggle to build worlds. You can just pull from the things that you've been observing years and years. These were birds from bird. Hey. <laughs> Um, I write, you know, this is my Seven Impossible Things interview. So just everything goes into the sketchbooks. Hopefully, and usually, more drawing than anything else. But this is also drawing from Bird. I hung out in um, Morningside Park, I think, in Harlem, and drew these musicians on location. It was so much fun. More drawing. And then people, you know, look at you as a celebrity when you can sit outside and and draw it's always fun so all right i'm not going to make it any longer <laughs> thank you so much that was the working process i hope i answered all your questions